Welcome back to the Health Icoms Disney Fun. I'm here today with MBM and we're going to be watching Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And before you say, oh, that's not a Disney movie, I'm going to hand over to my co-commentator here and he's going to explain why it is. It's a Disney movie because it was actually produced by Disney. I mean, come on, we have stuff in this marathon that was distributed by Buena Vista. Honestly, this is more Disney than Nightmare Before Christmas and James and the Giant Peach. And guess which one of those got into a Disney Kingdom Hearts game? Not Roger Rabbit, I can tell you that much. Well, he's in another Disney game. Um, in the Japanese release, they put him in instead of Bugs Bunny. It's weird. I thought this was live action, man. <laughs> it's James and the Giant Peach all over again, the bait and switch. Ah, uh, well see, that one was done for budgeting. This is just for an actual bait and switch. I also like how for this movie, you know... I mean, it is based on a book, so they can't, like, use original characters, but the fact that Roger Rabbit is not one of the main highlight characters. They could have cash capped this film so easily, but they didn't. His voice is also really fucking annoying. <laughs> yeah, that's Charles Fleischer as Roger. I only know his only other role as that annoying pterodactyl in We're Back. Ugh, less said about that, the better, really. So essentially, I know him as being annoying, playing annoying. It's like Bugs Bunny if you put him in a distorted mirror. Well, yeah, they actually made him to be a huge conglomeration of all the other stuff cartoons. He's supposed to have a cashew head, which is Tex Avery style. He has Droopy Dog's hair, Goofy's overalls, Porky Pig's bow tie, Mickey Mouse's gloves, and Bug Bunny's cheeks and ears. So... And as I was saying earlier, Who Framed Roger Rabbit is actually based off a book that was written nine years before the movie came out. And it wasn't called Who Framed Roger Rabbit. The book is actually Who Censored Roger Rabbit. Okay. Yeah, because in the book, Roger Rabbit, a Roger Rabbit actually gets killed off. Dumb. Yeah, but the reason, the way that the book keeps going is that Toons can actually make stunt double clones of themselves. So Roger Rabbit made one before he died, and his clone helps the detective solve his murder. Ah, oh, okay. So it's kind of cool, but also really weird. Also in the book, they're not cartoon characters, they're comic strip characters. I'm reminded a lot of Tom and Jerry just watching this. Well, yeah. All the uber violence that totally would not get past the censors today. I also see why they would want to base off Tom and Jerry since they themselves don't actually show up in this film. There are a lot of characters that they wanted in but couldn't. But honestly, I'm surprised with what they actually got away with. Yeah, definitely. Oh, the good old days when you can just leave your unattended baby with an animal next to sharp instruments. Who also leaves slices of bread just hanging out there? Don't you want to put that in, like, a wrapper or something? Oh, Roger. That's not how rabbits work. Don't try this at home, kids. Also, yeah, there's no warning before this telling all the stupid idiot kids to not try this at home that's done by professional animated rabbits. Oh, gravity. And now we get the live action. This is amazing. This is actually, this wasn't the first time that they had live action with cartoons, but like a lot of critics when this film came out noted, this was the first time they actually did it right, and it looked really, really good. It's definitely convincing. I find it actually hilarious that Roger's voice actor, he stood in for some of these roles, you know, obviously to give the live action actors some sort of direction on where to look. Every time he stood in for those roles, he insisted on wearing gloves. Just to get into character. 
I guess, which is weird because you're not delivering the lines on set. You're going to deliver those lines later, so okay. No, I want to do it in a fursuit, actually. Bring me a Roger fursuit. Let's not do that. I've been through the same argument whenever Tom wants to kick me out of Hellfire Comes. Please! <laughs> no, I can do a better retake! Just anything! Oh god, put away the first suit, Maxi. You ain't going nowhere. Hey, look, it's Mario Mario. But where's his brother Luigi Mario? <laughs> yes, his Latino brother, Luigi Mario. No, this is the wonderful Bob Hoskins. Who's supposed to play the toon hating detective? Although, why would you hate cartoons? How despicable of a human being do you have to be to honestly hate every cartoon in existence? I'm sure he has his reasons. Oh, hey, he has like a little Mickey Mouse toy on his desk. Because, you know, having the actual cartoon character himself is just not enough. How would you honestly feel, Tom, if you had to edit all your commentaries the same way these guys had to edit old cartoons? Like, going through a reel, cutting it, and literally having to paste it together. Uh, it would teach me professionalism for a change, I guess. Calamari, sugar daddy, like, just the lingo is so 40s here. Now, Bob Hoskins is actually English, so to hear him do an American accent is kind of hilarious. Oh, is he? I did not know that. Yeah, he's pretty gruff, actually. Because Toontown hasn't been invented yet! <laughs> Isn't that the Disney MMO? Uh, yeah? Uh, this show is terrible. But no, I'm actually talking about, like, the attraction Toontown. It actually wasn't invented until after this movie. The movie came out, was a success. So the Disney park's like, hey, let's actually make Toontown. I've only ever been to Disneyland Paris, and it wasn't really that great of an experience, to be honest. I've been to World... But I was like two or three, so I don't even remember. I honestly have to have my parents tell me what I did there. I think it should make all the parks like after the Illusion series. So you have Disney World, Disney Legend, Disneyland, and what's the other one? Oh, Castle of Disney. I'm so confused already by the games. Don't confuse the parks. I only realized the difference between world and land was that land starts with L, it's in California, and California's lame. There you go. It's like terrible theme park music. She can't just drop a cameo in like that. What do you think? This is a crossover film. That's exactly what this is, Tom. And I like how Dumbo is on loan. You can't just buy an animal like that? He has rights. I'm sure the Toons have a union at this point. And they're paying him in peanuts as well. He needs to join a union. Like, which uh, companies are crossed over in this, mate? I know there's Acme, or Looney Tunes, I guess. So you got Disney. Who else? Uh, them. Warner Brothers, like you said. You got a few... Like, Mighty Mouse, I think, is in this shit? There's a lot. Amblin. Amblin Entertainment's and some shit. Uh, you also got Felix the Cat Production, Turner Entertainment, Universal Pictures, King Features. They got a lot of cartoons. Ah, uh, the drug stalk, I remember him. Why wasn't Fantasia in this marathon, Tom? I'm sure all the people in the audience would love to watch nerds talk over orchestral music with no storyline. Maybe next time. Ooh, and that Super Boogaloo sequel marathon. <laughs> yep, I saw Clarabelle back there. That ball was from one of the uh, Bugs Bunny cartoons. I honestly don't know too much about Tex Avery cartoons. I know a lot about Disney, but when it comes to actually knowing the Looney Tunes, I honestly didn't get into them. 
It also doesn't help that recently they just keep trying to reboot them and makes it make me less and less likely to want to watch Looney Tunes. Yeah. I hear the new Looney Tunes show is pretty good, though. I haven't heard that. But I'll take your word for it. The Pacific Rail Company, this movie does have a weird allusion to an actual conspiracy that happened in, like, the 20s. Or it was something about, like, the tire companies were buying out the highway companies so that people would buy more tires. And it was a weird, weird conspiracy that actually happened in real life. I'm a big fan of um, the 20s style and the 40s as well, I guess. Oh, yeah, that whole Sunset Boulevard era. It even says it on the train. There you go. It's era appropriate. I know. I always attribute it to an era, but I completely forget that it's obviously named after a location. Oh, I just got that, Joe. The kids gave him cigarettes. Because, you know, the USDA wasn't around, FDA. I mean, come on. By the 60s, pregnant women were smoking. It's the totally cool hip thing to do. Yeah, this is also after, like, World War II and stuff, so you'd think that maybe Valiant was, like, a veteran or something? Ah, uh, that smooth jazz. Oh, baby, just wants me to have a glass of scotch for this commentary, but instead, all I got is this Capri Sun pouch. <laughs> Living the fog life, Mexi. I didn't pick it, it picked me. I don't know why it feels so good to record commentaries, Mom, it just does. Okay, this is historically inaccurate. What is he doing in this white bar? Well, you know, tunes exist in this world, so things are up and down, I guess. Oh, alternate reality, I get ya. Damn! That's kind of hardcore. Here's a toast to murder! Well, they wanted to make this a whole lot darker. The opening scene, you know, other than that little cartoon segment, they originally wanted the opening scene to be Marvin Acme's funeral. And they would have, like, Foghorn Leghorn, Mickey, Minnie, Tom Jerry, like, all these cartoons at his funeral. It's like, wow, that's nice. Something I can't wait to bring my kids to go watch. Side note, Foghorn Leghorn is probably my favorite Looney Tunes character. <laughs> Even sadder? Speedy Gonzalez is probably mine. Oh, Maxi, 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 Maxi. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. He's so deliciously racist. Arriba, arriba, on delay. But yeah, a lot of this movie seems like they intentionally just said, fuck the kids. I mean, it had been two decades since Disney actually had a hit animated movie, so kind of seemed like they just stopped trying to pander, like, you know what, we're going to make a movie. We don't even care about what audience it appeals to. Yeah, this was like one year before the Disney Renaissance proper started with Little Mermaid, wasn't it? Well, I honestly would say that Who Framed Roger Rabbit is the start of the Renaissance. <laughs> well, you could say it inspired Disney to go on and create the Renaissance films, but still... Oh, definitely. I mean, it was because of this movie that they got some money in, and honestly, interest in animation started for a really long time. No one even really cared about animation unless it was made by Don Bluth. After this, they even started putting animated shorts in front of their live-action movies again. Mm-hmm, like um, Runaway Brain with a Goofy movie. I'm talking about more that it was in one of their later I Shrunk Blew Up slash Did Something With The Kid movies. They put another short in front of it. God rest his soul. That sucks. Like, he can't even die a classy or gory way. It's like, he died the silliest way possible. What's the password? Banana cream pie. Mmm. I never knew what those little bib things were. But I always remember them being in cartoons, like, that part of a suit that rolls up and whacks you in the face. <laughs> yep. I never knew that it was actually, you know, to cheat having a white shirt under your suit. 
I love all the shadow work in this movie. I and mean, it's like you said, it's quite dark. It's almost film noir, actually. Yeah, except, you know, all the bright colors and animated characters. But, you know, take all that out, put a sort of tint over it, and there you go, you have a black and white noir film. Well, that's what you call juxtaposition, right? Oh, yeah. The Mary Poppins Penguins! Uh, that movie is way too long to commentate over. <laughs> Suck it, Razor. Yes! I fucking love this scene. Oh, yeah, the Hungarian Rhapsody scene. Daffy is only in this movie because Disney agreed that he would be an equal opponent to Donald, so. And I agree with that. Oh, yeah, that would honestly be a dick move. It's like, hey, can we have all your characters and then we make them the butt of our characters' jokes? I mean, we have we always have those, like, which character can be or which character kind of argument, but in a crossover, it's just nice to see them on, on like, a level playing field. And also, before you guys go crazy in the comment sections, no, Donald did not just call Daffy a goddamn stupid N-word, alright? It's a misinterpretation, Donald has a shitty voice, he said doggone stubborn little, alright? We get it, you want to seem super cool and make it seem like there's naughty words in this Disney film, alright? No, the most you get is an occasional naked person in a frame, alright? Let it go, let it go, Maxie. <sighs> it's just, it's so pathetic! Well, let TV tropes have their fun. We'll be here recording commentaries at the end of the day. Classic. I always feel like that guy at parties. It's like, I try to be so funny, but at the end of the day, I'm just buzzing people's hands and squirting ink on their shirts. Donald's prehensile butt. It's not even a tail, they're just feathers. <laughs> well, if he were, like, realistic, that wouldn't be the only skill he had. Oh. Daffy always looks so fucking scary to me in this scene. Then again, this is hardly the scariest scene of the film. Not by far. Hooray for classical music. It's so high society. Hooray right, for casual murder. <laughs> they're, they're tunes. Like I said, it's not even considered murder. It's censorship. Ha ha, he put a rock in the drink because he asked for it on the rocks. Oh, damn. Now we're really getting old school. Oh, yeah. I actually have an aunt that she's a huge fan of Betty Boo. Like, she has a whole bunch of Betty Boo merchandise and stuff. Honestly, the most I've seen of Betty Boo is her parody in uh, Drawn Together. Yep, yep. Fucking toot. Voice by Tara Strong, so don't think she's just a cartoon children's voice. She can do raunchy. Oh, boy, can she. <laughs> if you follow her on Twitter, you know that much. I don't. I should do that right now. Speaking of raunchy. Oh my. So, to distract from the obvious assets of this scene, um, a lot of the animators have quoted this scene as being the most difficult to animate because of Jessica's dress. The whole shimmering effect, the way they actually got it to work is that they took a plastic bag, scratched it with steel wool, and then just filmed that. Hang on a tick, are those the crows from Dumbo? Yes, you honestly can't tell without the casual racism involved. Yeah, and they are racist caricatures, guys. Look up the phrase, Jim Crow. Where are her organs? That's like not even a size zero waist. <laughs> They're on loan to Disney. Ah, uh, she sold her organs for peanuts, right? Gotcha. So do you think that during this time there's like legislature going on at the moment debating whether to legalize two live action relationships? I couldn't say one way or the other, mate. <laughs> it doesn't matter, like they just include that scene. Trying to make it some gross parallel to, like, 
like inter interracial marriages and stuff. It's like, please, Disney, you're hardcore enough as it is. You don't got to go that far. Well, there's interspecies relationships because this is, as we'll find out later, Jessica Rabbit. Oh, uh, yeah. Married to Roger Rabbit Y. I don't get it. Love the guy with a sense of humor. He's like a four at best, and she's an 11. If I'm going to rate cartoons on their attractiveness. This scene in particular really shows off how well they blended the um, animation with the live-action actors. Oh, yeah. They actually used robot hands for, like, moments when the cartoons hold stuff. So, he pretty much had a claw gripping that tie choking him. I'll get you next time, Valiant. Next time. I want to go to a jazz club now. They seem like such hip swinging places. Kind of disappointing that the Animaniacs weren't invented at this time. Ah, uh, they weren't! Spielberg was producing this film at the time, so he wasn't making cartoons yet. They're still debating whether to make a Who Framed Roger Rabbit 2, and you know who'd I love in there? What? Freakazoid. Oh, I got to be amazing, but really difficult to do. I mean, Spielberg has his own animation company now, DreamWorks. Yeah. And then Zemeckis is doing other stuff, so honestly, if you're gonna get a sequel, it's not gonna have the original people, and people are just gonna complain that it's not as good as the first bitch bitch wine. That's a gorilla, completely different from a chimpanzee. I'll put my lurking face in, I guess. Oh, yeah. He'll get his angry suit. Here's your film noir. They even got the steaming uh, subway thing going on there. That's one of my favorite visuals in films, I think. They actually do steam. It's just you gotta be there at the right time. <laughs> it's like a public event or some shit. Nah. A lot of people find it annoying, to be honest. Cameras like this even exist near the end of the foys? I don't even know. I'm not an antiquer. Yeah. Like, honestly, you could show me a Mac and say, this is from 1901, I'd probably believe you. It's like, ask me anything about animation or voice actors. Please, God, don't ask me about actual history. Oh, God, no. <laughs> Especially the history of cameras? What the hell? Yeah. Patty cake is a euphemism. Is he meant to look like Nixon? I don't think so, but the fact that he does honestly helps. Roger, do you mind? We're trying to have a grown-up conversation here. I like how his mucus is live action. It's like, they didn't draw boogers on the handkerchief. I don't know if it's exactly what you think it is. <laughs> it is patty cake. It doesn't even go anywhere just beyond that. And then I hear that they clap their laps and then put their hands together. <gasps> Filthy. Filthy, lewd, and disgusting. Ugh, get this out of my Disney movie. Roger, please, you're like famous or something, you can get someone else. Betty Boo is in that area. I'm sure you guys could hit it off easy. Wait, was Lola Bunny invented yet? Uh, just wait until Space Jam, I guess. Let's be honest, did any kid actually ever want to drink alcohol after seeing this be Roger's reaction to it? I think this might have been what kept me from actually touching the stuff until I was 18. What a maroon. I know, he wasted all that good scotch, now it's all over the floor. Oh, what's an alcoholic to do in the age of tunes? Could be worse, they could still be during Prohibition. Just imagining Boardwalk Empire with Acme tunes now. 
I don't even know what that show is. You should probably tell me more about it after the commentary. Mm, that's to do with the prohibition. I'll leave it there for now. Damn, Roger, drink a glass of water or something. He got a hangover really quick. I also love how they do cartoon gags in live action. Like, they don't try to make them overt realistic. Actually, speaking of Space Jam, that's kind of like the pseudo-sequel to this, or a spiritual successor, I guess. Yeah, I guess you could say that. Now I want Michael Jordan in this film. Where's my Michael Jordan cameo? But honestly, I unironically love that film. As do I. Like, even before the whole come on in jam memes... Roger Rabbit, take your kids to see it. All the adulterousness, and the alcohol, and the murder, oh, yeah. and the unemployment. Ah, such good Disney fun. Don't, don't forget about the casual patty cake scenes. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, my. Don't mind. I think tonight I'll be playing some patty cake later myself. Man, the soundtrack's so good. Oh, yeah. And Zemeckis actually had a lot of input for it, too. I mean, for just being director, he worked a lot on the soundtrack, more than usual. What other films has Zemeckis worked on, mate? Well, funny thing is, is that when the film was first pitched, he was turned down. Because the films he had made prior, this was around 82. So his most recent films were I Want to Hold Your Hand and Use Cars, and they were both bombs. So they're like, we don't want you working on our film, get that shit out of (laughs) here. But what happened was, when he came back, it's like, can I direct the movie now? Well, by that time, he had done Back to the Future. So they're like, oh man, you're such a good director. How's about you work on our film? I forget which Back to the Future I've actually seen. I think it might be two. I've seen the one with the scientist guy. (laughs) So all of them, then? Oh, yeah, I guess so. It's like saying, I've seen the Indiana Jones movie with the archaeology. (laughs) The guy with the hat. The guy with the whip. Just to recap, in case you all weren't paying attention earlier, this is uh, Eddie's brother, who had a piano dropped on him. (laughs) Goofy was charged, really? (laughs) Goofy cleared of spy charges, that's amazing. Uh, Like I said, this is right after World War II, I mean, you had all the espionage going on at that time. This tone is kind of what I wanted from Epic Mickey. Because do you remember the concept art that appeared before the game released? Yes! Honestly, I was expecting Epic Mickey to be really scary. Like, I was thinking almost Silent Hillish When they showed, like, RoboGoof and RoboDonald, I honestly thought, like, it was going to be a complete deconstruction of what we think is Disney. But then they had to go to test audiences, and it was too scurry, so the most we got from Dark and Brooding is, oh, we have Scrapper Mickey, He's he plays by his own rules and erases stuff. Well, even for Scrapper Mickey, they got rid of like his, his hunched over form, because basically what would happen, guys, just to give you a brief rundown, is that you can do good things, um, and you can do bad things, and... If you did, like, good things, you'd be all prim and proper. But if you were, like, bad and uh, performed certain actions, you'd eventually turn to more like a hunched-over Mickey or Farrell and whatnot. I know, it was so cool. And, like, they even sort of, like... Because his ears are perfectly round. I mean, that's his whole... The whole point is his head's is three perfect circles. But Scrapper Mickey, they kind of gave him tufts. So it almost, like, took out his clean, proper look. Yosemite motherfucking Sam. Minor 49er. Of course, all original voices, because what's a cameo if you're just going to put some crap job's mouth into that role? I'm sure the detective can have his own clearance. You don't need to say he's with you. Ow. Not even, like, crushed the whole body, just went straight for the face. It's happening all over again, and then he has, like, a Vietnam flashback. I warned you about the safes, bro! <laughs> it keeps happening. That's oh, that patty cake harlot, what's she doing here? Probably washing her hands to play some more. Ah. 
That's actually a pretty cool effect. I mean, for the 80s? Come on, that's legit. So what do they do for these? Just, like, rotoscope them? Probably. You know, just stand in props and then tell them, hey, this is now going to do something really cool. You won't be able to see it until all the editing's done, but believe you me, it's going to be amazing. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Did he paint his gloves beforehand? I don't get it. It's like, oh, his gloves were yellow, therefore the paint came off. That makes no sense. Just because something's yellow doesn't mean it's painted yellow. Yeah, notice a distinct lack of head. Notice a distinct lack of maturity. It's like, dead body, oh, no, wait, talking shoes. No, no, don't worry about the dead body. It doesn't need any respect or nothing, just... Yes, the cartoon shoes are the priority here. Oh, boy. I'll leave you to take this one, Mexi. Like I said, Zemeckis had just directed Back to the Future, so he wanted to bring Christopher Lloyd back to play Judge Doom, responsible for about a quarter of the nightmares I experienced for the first three years of my life. You'll see why. Wonderful actor, wonderful character. I don't really need to say any more. Yeah, I'm honestly surprised he can do villains pretty well, but, you know, this and Star Trek Three, he does the uh, so-evil-you-love-him villain pretty well. I remember him most, um, obviously, as Doc Brown, but also this and um, the Page Master in, well, the Page Master. <laughs> the Page Master, among other roles, in the Page Master. And by men, I mean more anthropomorphic animals. Top men. These are the Weasel Gang. Their names are Stupid, Smartass, Greasy, Wheezy, and Psycho. Wait, really? Yes, there are actual names. There were meant to be seven, so that they could be a satire of the seven dwarves. The other two were Slimy and Flasher. Okay. Yes, but they were written out of the script. Mostly because of the fact that they thought having seven weasels was too many, and that the two had no addition to the story. I think one of them is voiced by uh, Charlie Fleischer, you know, Roger's VA. Yep, he actually voices two of them. He voices Greasy and Psycho. David Lander voices Smartass, Fred Newman voices Stupid, and June Foray voices Wheezy. That last name sounds familiar. Not the boot. Not the boot! Oh, it's so squeaky and innocent! Looks suspiciously like Sonic's sneaker. They're sending subliminal messages from the past. They're letting you know that if you don't go fast in Sonic game, you get the... Ew, what is that, the chemical plant goo? Mega bug. So here's a fun fact. Judge Doom's whole the dip idea was actually inspired by Hitler's final solution. Because when you're making an animated movie, the first thing you think is, hmm, I wonder if we can incorporate Hitler Hitler's ideology into the plot. Jesus Christ. I told you, I honestly think they just did not give a rat's ass about making this movie appeal to kids. They were like, you guys didn't watch this for 20 years? Fuck you then, we're gonna make a kick-ass movie now. Hello, nurse. <laughs> it's okay, it's not sexual harassment yet. There's no workplace sexual harassment in the 40s. Damn. Ew. 
in the book, the baby's supposed to be 50, but in the movie, they just make him 36. I don't know why. I guess being 36 makes it funnier. Well, you can't really tell either way. Oh shit, no. What are you gonna pay him in pacifiers? Empty bottles and empty promises. It's Stogie. Not gonna lie, you know what this baby reminds me of? The final boss of No More Heroes 2. I know it's completely unrelated, but I'm getting that vibe. I'm trying to remember who that was. Uh, the bald business guy kind of turned into a superhero halfway through the fight. Oh, now I remember. There you go. <laughs> That's all you gotta remind people is the point where he turned into Batman. I love when a detective does actual detective work. I love when they pop out the magnifying glass, because it means shit's about to get real. Enhance. CSI before CSI was CSI. Back in the 40s. Enhance. I can put as many magnifying glasses as you tell me. It's not going to make the picture any clearer. I said enhance. I need a drink. It's been like five minutes since my last one. I'm starting to feel sober. That's pretty funny. I love hidden beds. I don't know what- it's sort of supposed to be like a symbolism of poverty, but at the same time, I really want a bed that I can pull out of the wall. Well, it's a childish kind of adventure thing. It's like something that's hidden. Yeah, anything that you can hide is super cool because then you think it's a secret from your parents. But then you completely forget, wait, who actually bought the house? Oh... Except all the Toontown, I kind of told them where I was. <laughs> Candlemaker, he didn't know shit. Yeah, Candlestick Maker is a blabbermouth. We ain't gonna tell him jack shit. The only thing you're killing at this moment, Roger, is comedy. Please stop. And the tone. I'm trying to go for film noir here, not slapstick. Yeah, and the thing is, he's not this obnoxiously stupid in the book. Then again, he's dead for the book, but even his stunt double clone, like, the whole point is that he really, really wants Valiant to solve his crime. Because he knows who killed him, he knows he was murdered, and he's going to make damn sure he gets his revenge. It's called forgiveness, Valiant. Come on. One, I really love you. Two, I really, really love you. It's like one of those notes you pass in middle school. Do you love me or do you love me, love me? Check yes, no, or maybe. And then the teacher takes it and you get embarrassed in front of the whole class and then you just give up on love completely. Speaker from the hall, am actually. What? No! <laughs> no! <laughs> Shut up! Who an alcoholic? That's where I go to solve all my problems. Get out of here! Oh, see, get it? Because we can make the jokes about alcoholism too! Call the cops, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Cops can't do jack shit, I'm a toon.
I knew that. That's one of my favourite gags, by the way. The closet being the exit door? <laughs> yeah. Classic. Well, at least an ironing board didn't pop out of this closet. Who the hell carries a pair of cuffs that they don't have the key to? An alcoholic detective, that's who. Uh, oh, wow, that's actually brutally realistic. Who gave those weasels a license? Oh, Judge Doom, I guess. Yeah, guys in, like, every politician's pocket. So, let me get this straight. The human detective needed clearance from the cops, but the five psychotic weasel gang are just free to be vigilantes. Mm Mm-hmm. All right. Seriously, the legal system in Toontown is really fucking weird. We're not going to do anything. You're going to go with them weasel punks. All right, calm it down. Hey, this is America. When we can't get our way, guns will solve all our problems. Oh, that's weird. You see, that was a realistic Tommy gun. Oh yeah, I forgot there were some scenes that, since they couldn't use a claw, they used string. So that's actually a marionette pistol. I was going to say, it seemed a bit wavery. It also kind of explains why the weasel has such a loose grip on it. Definitely not the rabbit. Nope, 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 no rabbit. Why don't you just turn on the garbage disposal? (laughs) That'll (laughs) test it for sure. (laughs) Jesus. Oh yeah, I can go dark. Who framed Roger Rabbit ain't got shit on me. I'm going to have to wash out the rest of this movie with that soap, man. (laughs) Need I remind you, one of these weasels is named Smartass. I'm reminded of a bit of uh, Ed from The Lion King. Uh, yeah. Who is he voiced by again? Jim Cummings. There it is. I know it's like one of those guys who voices everyone. Yep. There's like three guys that they voice everyone, and every time I try to guess that it's one of them, I guess the wrong one. How's that for a little bit of juxtaposition? He also voiced Robotnik in Siam. You know, the really, really dark Robotnik. But he also voices Winnie the Pooh. Yeah! Isn't he also Optimus Prime? And Tigger, too. Let's all just talk about our cartoon trivia. Come on, it's a movie about cartoons. Let's do it. Now, Charles Fleischer voiced um, Roger here. And uh, Charlie Adler voiced um, Buster Bunny in Tiny Toons. I loved Tiny Toons. Oh my god, that theme song was genius. I love the series, but what I remember most about that is, of course, how I spent my summer vacation. Well, that was a good movie. Oh, yeah. Like, honestly, the Spielberg, because he produced this movie, so this is totally irrelevant, guys. Don't get angry at me. In terms of the Spielberg cartoons, I always rate them as Animaniacs, Tiny Toons, and then Freakazoid Last, which I always get flack for. And it's not that I hate Freakazoid, yeah. it's just that I like the other two so much more. Animaniacs, mostly for the musical numbers. Like I said, I am helpless when it comes to musicals. I just love them. Nothing wrong with a well-written song, man. Oh, no. Plus, it also helped me be the only kid in elementary school who knew all the states and capitals and all the presidents. <laughs> of course. A rut gut room. It's really impressive when there's like more than just one character on screen interacting with the tunes. Also, there's a lot of references to peeping in this film. I mean, he first he got thrown out of the club for peeping on her, and then he had that peepy hole right there. We all gotta make sure we're not getting peeped on in this commentary. I hate that phrase, by the way. You know the one. 
I know the one. <laughs> I'm not gonna say it, though. Certainly helps when you cut the handcuff <laughs> part that's actually above your wrist. Oh, that's genius. That is one of the best rules ever. I can do whatever the fuck I want, but only when it's funny. According to who? Yes, because he was such a humdig kind of a guy that he decided to just carry his last will and testament on his person. You know, unlike normal people who put him in saves or in banks or somewhere, you know, where it's not on their person when they actually die. Well, he's the kind of person to live each day as if it was his last will. That's why he spent them at at uh, freaking jazz clubs looking at cartoon women. That's how I'd spend my last day. I mean, what? Could really go for some checks right now. That's old school checks. Like that cereal is so gross and bland. But on the bright side, they did come up with what was it? A Doom copy off with Chex Quest. That shit was good. The Hell Dragon goes on about that all the time. Why? It's. I mean, yeah, it's silly, but it's not something to rave about. <laughs> My childhood, basically. I can't look directly at you. You see, I'm part vampire. <laughs> if you look directly at Detective Valiant's eyes, you turn to stone. Man boobs. <laughs> oh god, like back hair. <laughs> don't be, don't be scared, Maxi. That's what a real man looks like. I love that line. I don't know what it is. I just love that, you know, she takes no responsibility for her actual character. She's just drawn that way. I mean, it's sort of the same with Roger Rabbit. Yeah, he's annoying, and I hate him, and I honestly don't care if he gets caught, but it's not his fault. He was drawn that way. Right, you posed for those patty cake, please. Have you ever tried to pose for patty cake pictures? It's really hard to do it convincingly. Kids movie. Kids movie. You say kids movie, yet the first test audience was a bunch of 18, 19 year olds. Guess how they reacted? They hated this. Oh, fuck them. I know, they actually walked out of the theater. I swear, some kids these days have no class, and by these days, I mean the 80s. Film noir is a, a genre you really have to want to watch, though, really. You either gotta be really old or really young, and you're going with your grandpa. Oh, please, don't act like that's the first time. She just wants to play patty cake with me. Come on, it's nothing all that serious. Filthy temptress. What's next? <laughs> Leapfrog? Oh, God. Simon says... <laughs> Bexy, please. This is a kid's commentary. Kids movie, kids movie, <laughs> let's talk about banking. Now back to the tunes. Oh, thank God. 
This movie can be so schizophrenic. I'm honestly surprised that this is held together as well as it is. I mean, if you told me we're going to take cartoons, but we're going to match it up with a film noir conspiracy, oh, and it's going to work, I'd call you loony. This could actually be a reference to the book, where uh, tunes don't feel pain. Just give them to the weasels. Be a few less headaches, I'd wager. Make this movie so much shorter. I'm a toon. What do you expect? It's in my ink. <laughs> I would say jeans, but he's wearing overalls. I made him laugh. What's that supposed to mean? Did you give him, like, drugs or something? Yeah. He's smoking the ganja. Is anyone in here a murderer? <laughs> you just sucked all the fun out of this bar. We were just all here to drink our problems when you come in here talking about murder. You, why not at the bar? Are you a murderer? Maybe. <laughs> they know rabbit here. Rabbits can't drink. You saw what happened to him earlier in this film. You could have just pointed to the word dip. Oh, well, yeah, you could have gotten a napkin or something. You didn't have to ruin this guy's uniform. He fucking served, you asshole. I swear, the law has no respect for anyone. Oh, it's One of my most hated sound effects. Yep, yeah, it's up there. 5,000, dollars All right, Sam, calm it down. Ah, uh, <laughs> could just got him like the rubber standing or something. That's hilarious. Now you're going in the dip instead. Oh, shit. Uh, and the cowboy behind him. Seriously, there's like some guy over there with tassels all up in his chest. <laughs> yeah, the random cowboy. Throw him in as well. I got a quote to me. Because, you know, we already had the cartoon cowboy. Now we just need the human equivalent. And you know, in the third Back to the Future movie, they went to the Wild West. Uh, I get it. It's a reference to Mechas. You're a clever motherfucker. Don't, don't eat it. He's appreciating the value. <laughs> He's quite the antiquer. Hmm, that tone sounds familiar. <laughs> Oh, is that what that song is called? Ah. The Muppets had a similar routine, actually. Did they? Figured they would try and do the text every go, da 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 da, and then have him try and finish it. That's a bit too on the nose, I think. Two bits is, two bits is far more timeless.
Two bits. Uh, hold it! Hold it! Stay on target! Way to go, you fuzzy fuck up. You want me to shank him, Sarge? I'm in the mood for a good shanking today. Yeah, I mean, they're the law. Who are they going to report to? Themselves? Ah, guacamole, my favorite. Oh, I want some guacamole. Damn you, Tom. <laughs> Maxi, come on. <laughs> yeah, I can't help it. Although, I do prefer my guacamoles to be turpentine-free. Uh-huh. Yeah, because he said that, like, what was in this stuff? Turpentine, benzene, acetone? All that shit's in paint thinner. Well, don't anyone try and help him. You know, let's all just stand around and show our respects. Shed your morals before you die. Cut down on, you know, on his once-in-a-lifetime usual. Rabbit season! He out-tuned the tune, I love it. Yeah, he's so clever. Well, he did like tunes before, so he's just using his old tricks. Might want to get down. Oh, the scotch! The wasted scotch! Oh, this is the saddest scene in the whole film! Damn! The violence, man. You're not pulling any punches. I like how that later becomes a plot point. It's like, oh man, he avoided it. It's like, well, yeah. Friggin' acetone stains clothes, man. Fugitive Mobile, away. It's a getaway car. Gadget Mobile, is that you? <laughs> Please, no. <laughs> you just can't help but bring me into movies that have talking cars. Jive talking cars. Uh, well, this one's less jive. I mean, this one is voiced by the same guy who's doing Roger's voice. Benny stayed around for a long time. Like, the same guy, um, Charles Fleischer, voices uh, Benny, the cab in House of Mouse. They were going to have the guy who does the baby's voice be the car. But, you know, I... Don't know why they didn't do it. I hear you about them sports teams! <laughs> I don't know, I went like Australian there for two seconds. I can't do any accents of any kind. He's going to be saying puns the whole movie, isn't he? I can't believe I've waited till now to say this. Hey, 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 it's time to play some crazy taxi. Are you with me? Hey! <laughs> oh my god, yes. I. <laughs> Leave it to the guy where Crazy Taxi is his favorite Sega game to just completely miss that. I love that game so fucking much, and the soundtrack is genius. Shame that when they re-released re it, they took out all the good music. They also took out all the product placement. Instead of being asked to take them to Pizza Hut, they were asked to take to the Pizza Shack. No, sir, I don't like it. I don't like Pizza Shack. I want to take people to Pizza Hut. <sighs> Extend their legs, really? Yep. This is the prototype for Inspector Gadget. Told ya. Man, this scene is really loud for some reason. Yeah, there's some weird audio editing. 
There are a lot of endangered babies in this movie, although, mind you, half of them aren't actually babies, but still, <laughs> there's, like, no, nothing safe in this movie. It's like, you're a baby? Well, you're gonna be in danger. Religious figure? You're screwed. Childhood? Dead. Well, it's not soon after World War II ended. People were just living to live, really. Then the damn baby boomers had to come and ruin it for everybody. Oh, I love the classic goofy cartoons. Equally as violent. He was less stupid, more just everything broke on him. It's a good thing he was cleared of those spy charges. <laughs> I never seen that joke. That's like one of the best gags in the movie. It's supposed to be such a throwaway, but could you just imagine? Please, please stop saying words with P sounds. Oh, God. Makes me wonder. Makes me wonder. Would this have been any better if Paul Rubin did audition for Roger Rabbit? That's Pee Wee, right? Yep. He auditioned, and then it was like, no, we don't like it. It's like, really? I'm getting serious whiplash from this movie. It's like, oh my god, it's so funny, I'm alive, and oh god, death! It's the good writing that holds it together, really. I mean, it does help that they just have two extremes, so it's like, any time they talk, you know, it's not out of left field, but still, just, the swings are pretty extreme. I like how Roger's almost sinking out of this scene, so it just leaves um, Bob Hoskins' character to just reminisce. Well, he is a man trapped in his memories. Oh, high squeaky voice, I can't possibly be all that bad. Come on, you're over-exaggerating. Way to piss on my brother's memories, Roger. Ah, quit making this shit all about you. God. Yes, yes, I do hate you, okay? There, are you happy? <laughs> you do hate me. Yes, you do. No, you don't. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Duck season. Rabbit season. <laughs> I know, fucking Nazis, who cares? They haven't done anything to us yet. It's after the World War, mate. <sighs> Don't, okay then. Never mind. Then why was that news story even there? Why were hats so much better and fashionable back in the day? Oh, they had money to spend and heads to wear hats upon. So many heads. Then you just got people trying to bring it back and they fail terribly. Okay, not every hat goes with a trench coat, guys. Especially the fedora. Please stop. Like, Bob Hoskins is wearing that. Yes, don't mind the ogling rabbit in the room. Awkward buzzkill! I wonder how Bob feels being cock-blocked by a rabbit. Probably about the same as every other day. God, I need a drink. <laughs> so I go, look, the sun's out. I need a drink. Raining? Need a drink. Put both my shoes on. Time for a drink! Just keep shaking till they run out of film. I'm 22 and I still don't get any of this real estate controversy crap. These were literally the parts I zoned out when I was a kid. Or, you know, on VHS, just decided to fast forward. Because mm -hmm. God knows we couldn't skip chapters yet! Although, I do think this movie was released on Laserdisc, so you could have frame advanced.
Here's a question for you, Maxie. What time of year do you usually watch this film if it's on TV? Um... When was the last time this was even on TV? Holy shit. Uh, for me, it was... I don't think last Christmas, but the one before it. Yeah, I was gonna say Christmas time as well. It just seems like something to watch around Christmas time. I mean, it's no summer blockbuster. The beginning of the year is too depressing for this shit. Springtime, I'm not even watching any movies because I'm outside. But, yeah... I'd watch this around Christmas. I mean, I'm doing it right now. Yeah, the dark tone suits winter, I think. Surprise. <laughs> Love it. It's the 1940s, man. You're all ready to have fucking heart attacks. You guys put three sticks of butter per potato. Right for the drink, as per usual. I think I remember Zemeckis said that uh, a major brewing company actually offered to have their name visible on all the liquor bottles. Which, given that there is at least a billion per seed, you'd be seeing its name a lot. But, you know, ultimately Disney's like, yo, we're Disney. We really shouldn't actually have liquor product placement in our movies. Liquor is fine, but not if we're actually going to sell out to the liquor. Licensed liquor, bad. Guns, yes. Oh, yeah, well, you can't license a gun. Or can you? I don't really know. Why would you throw the gun away? <laughs> I'm holding you at gunpoint, and now I'm not. Kiss him passionately. Wait, what? I don't get any of this. It's so hard keeping up with this shit. Damn. I know. Well, Eddie, you didn't actually kill him yourself, but your actions led to the death of a man. Way to go. After that femme fatale. You know, she gets really offended when it's like, how dare you accuse me? It's like, well, then why is it that you're always at the scene of every single crime? Exactly. Then again, there were like four... The, the script for this movie went through a shit ton of drafts. Forty of those ended with her actually being the killer. I can see that happening, yeah. Her and Baby Herman were the two villains that, you know, obviously didn't make it to the final cut. Baby Herman, I guess, just because you only see him in two scenes, so... I mean, I guess it would be a bit more of a slap in the face. Like, oh man, it's the character we totally forgot was even in the fucking movie. Line. <laughs> line? No line, just action, Tom. This is a man of action. Action and guns. Yosemite Sam gave him that. That's hilarious for some reason. It has prospector bullets. I bet you one of those bullets is named Billy. <laughs> I would love if one of those bullets were named Billy. Let's rock. Guns don't kill people, they just make them laugh. I ain't cocked, I'm just drawn that way. The, the, the one point in which real, actual functioning people take a drink, you're not going to drink. Who needs a drink when you have cartoon bullets? Fuck a ball. Yes, use the stereotype bullet on the bottle. <laughs> 
I can literally feel Lolly retching as we speak. You know, there was a tunnel in a wall, yet they didn't go with the Wily e. Coyote or Roadrunner gag. Really? They kind of used that earlier on when the guy put his hand through the wall. Yeah, but it wasn't painted on. It wasn't like... Ugh, you know what? Forget it. I didn't even really like Wily e. Coyote all that much. The only thing I know about the cartoons is that his middle name is Ethelbert. <laughs> what? The E is not Wily, you know, like Mega Man. It's Wile... Ethelbert Wolf. Or Wild Ethelbert Coyote. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I just don't know what's what anymore. All oh, the free little pigs. Yep. I forget if they were in a short or if they actually made a full fledged movie about them. I definitely remember the short. Mm hmm. That and Clock Cleaners were some of the first cartoons I can remember. I also remember there being, like, a Disney Peter and the Wolf. Uh, yes, there was, yeah. Okay. I don't know why, I just saw the animals there. It just kind of reminded me that... I think that was the first time I ever heard that orchestra or whatever was in through a cartoon. I think back there you could see Snow White and the Witch just, like, passing by a, an apple stand. Well, they were only enemies for the film. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the payoff to this is great. <laughs> droopy. Fucking droopy. Love it. Nothing better than a manic depressive dog. <laughs> the visual gags. Well, I guess they had the cartoons do so much that, you know, they need to switch it up. Now we got to see what a human in Toontown does. So much peeping. Oh, <laughs> it's Lena Hyena. No. Don't call us, we'll call you. Funny thing, this is an actual cartoon. Lena Hyena is a cameo. She was made in, uh, in 46. It was a contest to see for someone to draw the world's ugliest woman, and Lena Hyena won. Tweety pie, yes! Just remember, he is a boy. I found that out during the, uh, what was it? It was the Tweety and Sylvester cartoon? They had one episode, it was a great gag, where Tweety goes into a bathroom, and he goes through one of the doors. He pops his head, I was like, see, I am a boy. This was part two of the contract in order to get Bugs Bunny in. If Daffy was supposed to be equal to Donald, Bugs had to be equal to Mickey in this scene. Now, this seems like commonplace nowadays, given all the crossovers that have taken place since, but back in the day, this was mind-blowing. Yo, this is some Kingdom Hearts shit, man. Funny. Now I'm gonna die. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time we saw a death on screen. I think death would have been kinder. You either get death or the hyena. I still love that. It's like, you know, he spends the first half hating them, like letting on that he knows absolutely nothing about them. When he knows the rules, he knows the game, and he knows how to take down every tune using their own damn rules. There's so many references to old cartoons littered throughout Toontown. I think there was one for... I forget the actual name, but it's like Jack and the Beanstalk or something. Um, I know Disney did a Jack and the Beanstalk thing. It was called Fun and Fancy Free. And there was also a level based on that in uh, Mickey Mania. I've played, like, the first two levels of that game, and then I always keep dying because I am trash at platformers. Dude, it's not you. It's a rock-solid platformer. I remember another platformer. It was on the Game Boy, Mickey's Dangerous Chase. Here's the plot. Mickey was going to give Minnie a present, but Pete stole the present, so now you got to go get the present back. All right? Interesting. It's on the Game Boy, and it is 
hard. So fucking hard. Like, I don't, it wasn't even made by Capcom, but it is harder than a Mega Man game. And it's a Mickey game. Speaking of uh, hard video games, <laughs> I'm surprised we've waited until this long to cover this. Question for you, Maxi. Who made the Roger Rabbit video game? Sunsoft? No. I give you one more guess. Um, LucasArts. No, it was in fact Rare. What? Yep, and it was published by LGN. <laughs> you know, I really should have thought of it. Anthropomorphic animals in a video game. So, how many billion cartoon pieces did you have to collect to get to the second level? <laughs> Don't do that. That's nuts and bolts talking. <laughs> No, that's a bit sooner. I'm talking some DK64 in there. Okay, I get that one. So, if Lena Hyena was an actual cartoon... Um, Jessica is actually a reference to, like, a shit ton of cartoons. She's supposed to have... The red obviously comes from Red Riding Hood, from that one cartoon where the wolf goes to the club. And then she's also referenced, uh, of Rita Hayworth. And a whole bunch of other just, you know, sexy ladies. Oh, fuck you, Christopher Lloyd, you magnificent bastard. I want to punch you in the face, but then I don't want to hurt it. Lucas, darling. <laughs> that fucking turn is hilarious. And slightly toony. Hmm? Uh, I don't get what you're referencing here. I mean, the guy is clearly not a tune. You want to know where some of the working titles for this film? Because Who Framed Roger Rabbit actually wasn't the first choice. Go for it. They went through a whole bunch. The first one was Murder in Toontown, which I like. Uh-huh. Toons. Uh, pretty broad. Dead Toons Don't Pay Bills, which sounds pretty cool. That's pretty cool, yeah. yeah. The Toontown Trial. There hasn't been a single court case in this entire film. Yeah. Trouble in Toontown. And yeah. Eddie Goes to Toontown. Uh, Trouble in Toontown or Who Framed Roger Rabbit? I would go Who Framed Roger Rabbit, or you could go with the book title Who Censored, but Murder in Toontown I think is pretty good too. Parallel parking, bitch. Who gave Roger a license? This seems kind of funny, because this is literally Charles talking to himself. What, is someone going to have to paint him new tire feet or something? No, they're just going to take him to the doctor, and then the doctor's going to have to transfer him to a mechanic, and then he'll get his operation. Oh, he is Clover Industry. I think I get it. I'm trying to follow. I really am, but it's not working. Hey, we're commentators, not real estate. Also, I just can't get into it. I mean, Doom was supposed to have an animated vulture on his shoulder. You know, probably, you know, one of those bald ones that goes, nope, nope, nope. But they didn't animate it. Too difficult. And to be fair, he's a bit on the nose already, what of all the black and whatnot. I think the vulture would have been overkill. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jessica just loses her composure right there. Because even though she is a two, she has yet to do anything, like, zany. She's just been straight-faced. Sultry. Oh, my. We're gonna hold the biggest keg party the world has ever seen! Kegger? Ten tons of Doritos. A billion gallons of guacamole. <laughs> you said 
You said Dorito, and I was thinking, what, are you going to say that the dip is Mountain Dew? <laughs> that would honestly be, be even better. He's actually planning the Xbox One la- launch party. There's going to be tons of Dorito and that giant thing of Mountain Dew. <laughs> I really hope that was ad-libbed, but if it was written, that's pretty cool, too. Either way, if it looked funny, go with it. Come on. Splice in some reaction shots of me and shove it on the air. Yeah, just take your flying car across, though. <laughs> that... Uh, it's so weird that they made the plot about this to include the invention of the highway. How many kids in the 80s are even going to know that there was a time in the course of human history when there weren't highways? I mean, the the kids come here for, like, the animation and whatnot. The adults get, like, all this uh, darker subtlety, so both camps are happy, I guess. I mean, I I know I'm giving beef to the plot. I know, but at the same time, I've watched this movie so many times and I never gave it any flack. I just ignored it. But now that I'm actually sitting down trying to make sense of the plot, now it's just, it's not clicking for me. So literally, this is a movie I have to enjoy with my brain turned off. Just enjoy the tunes. How many mouth shots have there been where I've gotten very well acquainted with the back of Roger's throat? Too many for my liking. I mean, seriously, I have a date with his tonsils next Tuesday. Da 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 da. Bricks. Who's Raul? Bring forth the do. <laughs> Oh my god, that weasel, just that voice, it's so creepy and eerie. I'm going to patty cake your brains out if we survive this. (laughs) We'll even do Miss Mary Sue. You know, now I'm even more convinced that it's Mountain Dew. That shit looks disgusting. Do the do. Do the do. Well, think of it this way. Mountain Dew is you start drinking it when you stop watching cartoons and start playing violent video games on your Xbox One. Okay, that one, obviously, (laughs) scripted. Isn't that the equivalent of your mom saying stop making that face, you'll get stuck that way? If the wind changes. <laughs> oh, I was always so scared. And then I wasn't, because then I realized, come on, everyone makes funny faces. If that was true, there'd be way more ugly people in the world. Yeah, if that was true, Jim Carrey would be fucked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love Jim Carrey shit. Have you seen him in Living Color? Uh, no, actually. Watch the one where he's uh, a fitness video instructor. You'll love it. Isn't it a bit too late to be making this a musical? Distracting them through the power of laughter, genius. Bob Hoskins can do it all. He can. I mean, it's so impressive that um, he said that after this movie, like two weeks after the he took his son to watch the movie, his son wouldn't talk to him. 
His son was like, I can't believe my dad actually worked with Bugs Bunny. So I don't know why that would cause him to not want to talk to his own dad, but yeah. Probably just jealous. And uh, by the way, those bombs he was holding, Hen Mickey. Because Disney just can't help themselves. Oh my god. Just... Couldn't he have just used his tune gun? Did electrocuting himself really have to be necessary? <laughs> this is creepy. I don't know what's going on anymore. There's so much violence. Word. Well, that's not fair. He wasn't even wearing pants. So he causes the bad guys to have friggin' heart attacks and they pass away. Brilliant. Yes, and more importantly, the bad guys go to heaven. <laughs> Just like Kome and Kokote all over again. <laughs> yup. Or, you know, it's like all dogs go to heaven. That came out before this, making a reference. Weasels are kind of like dogs. Okay, why does he get to go to heaven still? Like, even on his way to heaven, he decides to do one more dick move. It's like you said, all dogs go to heaven. <sighs> even if they're assholes. I'm surprised, like, none of the mist from that stream is actually getting to them. Yeah, there's probably just got to be a concentrated blast. Probably. It's like high pressure. It's the same reason why, you know, Shadow Mario can swim through water, but you can take him down with flood. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, fucking Yes, the singing blade, the curve balls, I I love it. Why isn't the Acme Company real? Cartoon magnets, how do they fucking work? No, don't, don't drag him towards you, that's not what I wanted. I just wanted the sword! Nice job, Eddie. Bravo. me, I can understand making curveballs, making hole in the walls, making giant magnets, making all these shit. Why does Acme need to make steamrollers? Comedic effect, I guess. <laughs> I'm not laughing! Alternatively, he could have also put the hole on the steamroller. Yo, damn, that doom foo. How very annoying and slightly immobilizing. And very, very sticky. Oh, okay, so this is cool. So this route that he's, like, trying to build for the highway, it would actually, it's actually where the real-life 10 freeway for Los Angeles is. Huh. Yeah, they actually tried to make his evil plot historically accurate. Why you would want to go with that for your cartoon movie? I don't know. I can't believe what I'm seeing here. Oof. Nasty. And it could be worse. They could have included crunching. Robert Zemeckis actually has this flattened model. He still has it in his office. I wouldn't work it out in the office to add this shit. It 
It's funny because it actually happened. Probably the most impressive shot in the film right now. Oh yeah, the inflato villain. Nope. No, 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 can we just take a minute to uh, thank Robert Zemeckis for making one of the most creepy villains in film history? Please don't ever put this guy in a video game. I'll be too scared. I honestly thought Who Framed Roger Rabbit was one of the scariest movies when I was a kid because of this scene. And yet, I still kept watching it. I was very confused as a child. Well, children love to be scared. Back then, we thought... We were all, like, real hard asses and we could take anything, but nope, when it comes to, like, this shit and the Daleks, we're just hiding behind the sofa cushions. Also, a really good note about uh, Christopher Lloyd's acting, he doesn't blink in any of these scenes. Like, they didn't actually edit the eyes over. He made sure to keep his eyes open so that putting on these effects was a bit easier. Bye bye. No, there's too much sugar. And he burnt his rabbity bum. It's not like he needed that tail anyways, just have the animators draw him a new one. How many times do you need to kill Christopher Lloyd in one movie? Have mercy, Robert. <laughs> as many times as it takes, you cannot kill the Lloyd. <laughs> Christopher Lloyd has multiple forms. At this moment in time, he's just pretty much going to have a big explosion and appear in a new form. Splashing through the dew. <laughs> Gonna get me some Doritos. Then I'll play some car. Gonna headshot a bunch of noobs. Oh boy, here it comes. Time for all that London studio work to come into play. Because that's actually where they did most of the animation, Delios. Twit diddly, twit diddly. The fire codes in Los Angeles are really strict. You need to have no less than eight fire hydrants port per floor. Ah, oh, baby, that smooth jazz. Hands off the wife. She's so delusional, it's hilarious. Sweet baby Jesus and the orphans. Implying you were some other car before those 37 years? Yes, that 1940 CSI, complete with uh, fingerprints, DNA testing, the whole lot. When seriously disturbed, too. I know. He must have been drawn by Yoan Vasquez or something.
You've been wearing the same shirt this entire movie? Damn! Detectives work long hours, I guess. Well, he did laundry halfway through the film! He couldn't change? God, Valiant, that was personal! Please! Would it, like, all that riding on top maybe void the will or something? <laughs> How terrible would that be if some lawyer just found a loophole? I think there's a legal testament to say, if it's the end of the film, we'll just roll with it. And yeah, I guess. So, mate, we've come to the end of uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. What do you think of the movie in ten words or less? It weird, but it do good thing for animation. Made the renaissance. I think you went over ten words, then. And as for me, I love Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Watch it at Christmas. There, ten on the nosy. You just have to show off all the time, don't you? <laughs> play patty cake <laughs> all the cakes and uh, I guess that'll do it for today folks so please come back tomorrow for the final day of the Hellfire Commons Disney Fund where we've got a double bill of movies for you so see you then bye bye